Welcome to the Positive Partnerships webinar series. Today's webinar is an information session on siblings. I'd like to start by introducing myself. My name is Rachel Dillon and I'm the Delivery Team Leader for Queensland. I'd like to welcome everyone to today's webinar, wherever you may be calling in or dialing in from. During the course of this webinar, my intention is to cover these areas. To get you all thinking about siblings of children on the autism spectrum and both their positive and negative issues and emotions. I'd like to also cover how best to support these siblings and hopefully offer some new ideas for you all. I'd like you now to think for a moment about your intentions. Why are you here? What's your intention today? And how could you best use this time listening? Whilst thinking about this, I'd also like you to remember one of the most important things is that you're the expert. Parents are the people who know more about their children than anyone else. So today I'd like you to create a safe space for yourself. Make sure you're comfortable in a quiet space, almost like your own container or vessel, for you to fill with new ideas, and thoughts. If you take away one new idea or thought, then we've succeeded here today. You might feel emotional listening to some of the emotions that siblings might go through, or you may not. You may not even process some of your feelings or learnings until some time after this webinar, and that's okay too. Do feel free to email the Parent Care Line for any advice if you'd like to talk through something, whilst at the same time, think about who you may have in your own circle of support or network of friends and family that you could download or debrief with after this webinar. The one thing you should not take away with you is any self-doubt. You are a force for good. You are doing and have been doing the best job you possibly can with all of the knowledge and the information that you had at the time. Today, our focus is not our children on the spectrum or the children on the spectrum in your family. We're going to focus our energy and intentions on the needs of the siblings of these children. Let us start by recognising the fact that some of these children may not have known a life without ASD. Some siblings may have had time with you without a brother or sister on the spectrum. Time to say adjust to living with a brother or sister with ASD. Regardless, these siblings will have a longer relationship with your child on the spectrum than anyone else in your family, which is why it's so important that we foster and nurture this special bond. What might be some of the wonderful values that our siblings living with autism are learning? Without you even realising, there are a lot of positive emotions that living with difference can bring up. Have a think for a moment. What might be some of those wonderful qualities and values being instilled in your siblings by living with a brother or sister on the autism spectrum? Perhaps independence strength, kindness. Being proud of their brother or sister. 
compassion, resilience, maturity, understanding, tolerance, nurturing, and caring, loyalty, These things might all be happening without you even thinking about them. So take a moment now to remember these things. It's very important. These human qualities can often take a lifetime of teaching and learning for individuals without ASD or difference in their lives to learn. Take a moment now to be proud of yourselves and your family for developing these values and qualities just by being who you are. Think then, what could possibly be some of the negative feelings or issues that your siblings living with a brother or sister with ASD might be? What difficulties might they be facing or might they face in the future? Perhaps frustration, a chaotic environment, jealousy, guilt. And sometimes this guilt may be because they are feeling jealous or frustrated or even angry. Resentment, attention seeking behaviour. Sadness, embarrassment, anger, loneliness, confusion, pressure, and a sense of responsibility. Sometimes our siblings take on the role of being a carer at a very young age themselves. Or perhaps they lose their own identity being someone else's brother or Tom's brother who has ASD or Tom's sister who has ASD. Missing out on holidays and outings because of their brother or sister can often cause anger and frustration. Missing out socially, perhaps being unwilling to bring friends home could be an issue. And this sense of guilt over these feelings is one thing we need to be really aware of just so that we can let our siblings know that it's okay to have these feelings, that we as parents might have them too, and that's okay to not let that guilt happen. We're going to take a moment to watch a video now, just so that we can reinforce and see some of the lovely qualities that develop in our young children who are growing up with ASD in their lives. Perhaps these siblings might feel some of the feelings that your siblings feel as well. Sometimes I feel embarrassed, I feel guilty, guilty, ashamed, guilty, isolated, ashamed, resentful, isolated, responsible, responsible and pressured. I have been graced with amazing perspective and insight, social awareness, appreciation, social awareness, appreciation tolerance, tolerance, pride, tolerance, loyalty, pride, and an abundant heart. And an abundant heart. Thank you. 
So I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope something resonated with you. Perhaps some of your siblings are feeling the same feelings, both positive and negative or having the same worries. But I guess the message is that if we love our children, hopefully that will shine through. So what might be some of the signs for one of our siblings needing support? 
What changes might we see in their behaviour that could help us recognise the need for support or help or some kind of intervention? Perhaps anger or a change in aggression, sadness, becoming withdrawn, experiencing difficulties at school, always feeling sick, teasing, attention seeking behaviour, fighting, avoiding their brother or sister perhaps, staying in their bedroom more. These are just some of the signs which may be presented by a sibling who may be struggling. I guess what we need to remember though is that every child will react differently to a brother or sister with a disability. And so particular needs or support will look different. And children's needs change according to their stage of development. And they will also go through different phases. And I guess here it's particularly important to remember that sometimes when children reach adolescence or teenagers, the fighting is not necessarily anything to do with being on the spectrum. It's just, just to do with being teenagers and brothers and sisters. I guess we need to be aware of those regular developmental stages. And I guess it's not only each, uh, every child on the spectrum is completely different as well. We always like to coin the phrase, if you know one child with ASD, great, you know one child with ASD. Each family is different and therefore all our siblings are different and will have different needs, expectations, ability to cope. So the type, of, the type and need for support will vary greatly between families. So let's take a look now at some ideas for supporting our siblings who may be struggling. Number one is parent time, which can often be tricky, particularly if it's a single parent household. But just being mindful to even allocate those five or 10 minutes to read a story before bed or to spend some quality time or to ask questions. When we talked before about different children feeling different emotions, I guess to have those conversations around their feelings, checking in with them, just making sure that their feelings, that they're not feeling things like guilt over feeling angry or frustrated, that they know that it's okay to feel these things and that it is difficult sometimes to live with children who are different or have a disability. Recognising that together. But how could you perhaps spend a little bit more time with your siblings, given that we know all too well that often a lot of our attention is given to those children on the spectrum. Another thing that's really important is developing the sibling's knowledge of ASD. And this can be done through videos or books, or just talking about the challenges and the differences, just so that their expectations are matching their understanding. There's lots of picture books available for young children around ASD. And like I said before, just acknowledging and understanding their feelings, letting them know that it's okay for them to have these feelings if they're negative, like anger or frustration or embarrassment. And giving them strategies to cope with these feelings. Allowing your siblings to have their own identity is really important. Making sure that they foster their own interests And perhaps if you have a sibling that may not necessarily want to talk to you, but may be willing to talk to other people in sibling networks or support groups. There's even some online sibling support groups 
and often this can be a place for siblings to develop relationships with other siblings of children with a disability. Often they form this same bond over the knowledge of, of understanding that, oh, my brother does that, my sister does that, it's really annoying. And they might also be willing to share their emotions and feelings with people outside of the family. Perhaps then they can invite a friend over that they've made a sibling support group without having that embarrassment because that sibling might know exactly how they're feeling and understand. Perhaps you may not realise that there are lots of siblings camps out there and social events. Might be something worth thinking about. Again, for the same reasons of using sibling support groups. In a moment, I'll be showing you some great websites. And like I said, there's actually some online support groups completely monitored by mentors that you might find useful for your siblings as well. There's plenty of books and resources available too. And if you've been to one of our parent care workshops, perhaps you'll find some of the next couple of tools really useful that are facilitated at the workshop. The first one is our growth model. For those people that attended a workshop, you'll understand that the G stands for goal. And for this particular sibling, she was wanting to feel more loved and valued in her family. The R stands for reality. And Susan is 13 and going through puberty which is a tricky stage and she doesn't feel loved and cries a lot, isn't happy with her parents and very intolerant of her brother on the spectrum. O is for options, so brainstorming your options. Perhaps one of the options is to acknowledge her feelings again, letting her know that it's okay. Providing opportunities for her to express her feelings to you privately is a really important strategy. Maybe spending some quality time with her doing something she really enjoys. And of course, telling her you love her. Encouraging her to tell you what life is like for her. We may not be aware as parents of some of the things our siblings are going through. And being aware of some of this behaviour is age appropriate and due to the impact of hormonal changes and quite normal. Ensuring that she has a good understanding of her siblings and perhaps even an understanding of ASD itself and identifying who she has in her support network and extend if necessary. The W is what will we do right now? Plan an outing with Susan. The T stands for tactics. What will we do to make that happen? Make a date with her, plan what we're doing. Ensure there's some time to walk together to do an activity that provides a forum or a space for her to talk. And validate her feelings and talk about the people around her that are also able to support her. And H is for our habits. What are we going to put in place to sustain these options? Plan to get together regularly, going for walks regularly to give her lots of opportunities to offload her thoughts and involve her in some planning for strategies for her brother. So the growth tool is just one tool that might be useful. If you'd like to know more about the growth model, you can find that on the Positive Partnerships website. There's also um, a module in the Parent Carer online learning section where you can learn more about the growth model. Another tool that is used in our workshops is the networking circles. Where you begin to think about the relationship of the sibling or the sibling on their own, the relationship between the sibling and parent and who might be in the sibling's close relationship, who might be in their informal relationships and who might they seek to talk to professionally. But just sitting down with them and working out who, who they would speak to and then what would they speak to them about if they felt they needed to have more networking. I guess whatever the situation, if children feel safe, supported and valued, are able to share information and feelings and feel they can solve problems, make choices and have some control over their lives, they will develop greater self-esteem, strength and resilience. A very important quote. So in summary, 
Once we understand the needs of a sibling, it is possible and fairly easy to find the right type and level of support. No matter what is going on in any child's life, helping them to feel safe, to share their feelings, is crucial and means you're more than halfway there. Safe, supported, valued and understood. And firstly, as parents, make sure that you look after yourselves. We're no good to anyone if we don't look after ourselves first. There's a couple of documents that you can find online that you might find really useful. One of them can be found on the Siblings Australia website and it's titled How Parents Can Help Sibs. This website, I'll show you in a moment, is called siblingsaustralia.org.au and in this document there's lots of little tips on how you can support your siblings. Another fantastic document can be downloaded from the Association for Children with a Disability website and it's called Growing Together, a Parent Guide to Supporting Siblings of Children with a Disability. Both of these documents are free to download and very useful. Here are some fantastic websites that you might like to think about accessing and having a look through. The first one I just mentioned, which is where you can find the How Can Parents Support Sibs doc, siblingsaustralia.org, and it's also where we got some of our quotes for this webinar today. The second one is called livewire.org.au, and as a member of Livewire, it's a safe online environment for young people between the ages of 10 and 20, either living with serious illness, a chronic health condition or a disability, and their siblings. So it's a place for them to meet new friends, share experiences, creatively express themselves, play games, and know that they're not alone in their situation. Livewire.org chat hosts are trained moderators and constitutes a, a unique feature of the livewire.org.au chat facility. Chat hosts are active participants directly engaging in conversations with siblings or children with a disability and facilitating activities with the members. Their presence provides a more integrated and fun community while ensuring Livewire members are having a positive, enjoyable and safe experience. They have a comprehensive registration process so parents can be assured that it's very safe. It's validated and young people under 18 require parent consent, proof of identification and third party reference in order to gain unrestricted and ongoing access to the Livewire community. Here is a quote from one sibling. Through Livewire, I've had the opportunity to speak to other people my age who have been through similar situations, understood me, and I could talk openly to them without feeling embarrassed or ashamed. There's also a great, a, a great website there for parents called raisingchildren.net.au. Lots of fantastic information there and another one called autismspeaks.org. On all of those websites, you will find information to support siblings. If you haven't yet taken a look at our, some of our online learning material, you might like to log on. All you need is an email address and a password. You can extend your knowledge further on siblings by completing our online module if you haven't already. You'll also find lots of other interesting topics to complete. You can do your learning at your own pace. It's quite interactive and usually takes approximately 20 minutes for each module, which you can stop and start at any time. Another place for information is our Positive Partnerships website, which offers a range of courses as well as fact sheets and all of our workshop tools. or our Facebook page. Our Facebook page has over 3,000 followers, lots of tips, information and chats regarding the supporting of school-aged children on the autism spectrum. 
This page offer, can offer evidence-based resources about autism, inform people about positive partnership workshops and act as a forum for people to share their experiences of autism. We encourage you to leave comments or questions or photos and videos and links here. We do, however, review all posts and will remove anything that we deem offensive or inappropriate. Finally, I'd like you to take a moment now Think of any questions you may have in your head still. You could perhaps speak to someone in your network of support or any reflections or thoughts that you'd take away from you, take away from this webinar today. Just start thinking to yourself, where to from here? What could be one new thing or strategy I'm going to do following this webinar? What action could I create for myself right now? I'd like to thank everyone for joining me in this webinar today. And like I said at the beginning, if, if you're taking one new thing away from today, then we've succeeded. Thank you very much and have a great day.